Good evening, Dr. Luke. I am that young man that met Jesus many years ago. I'm an old man now, but it was as if it, was as if it, it happened yesterday. I was not just an ordinary young man. I was a very wealthy young man. I had a lot of wealth and influence because with wealth comes influence. I'd accumulated a lot of wealth uh, from my father. And when he passed on, he left his inheritance with me. And so through wise counsel, I was able to multiply that wealth to something that would carry me into the next world, to the next life. After passing out of this life to the next, I would have enough to survive in the next life. Of course, that was what I was taught. I know different now. Since I met Jesus, everything has changed. So what was my life like? Well, when you have a lot of money, when you have a lot of wealth, you have a lot of friends. You have a lot of respect. And I had gained a lot of respect from the Romans because that meant my wealth meant a larger tax revenue for them and I could I could pay my taxes and still have enough left over to have a very very comfortable life but everything changed when I met Jesus that day on the road to Jerusalem Jesus was making his way to Jericho he was on his way to Jerusalem but Jericho was in between and I was making my way down from Jerusalem to Jericho after doing business in, in Jerusalem. And I had heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And before he had reached Jericho, he had accumulated a large crowd that followed him from the desert. What did I know about Jesus? That his father's name was Joseph, his mother's name was Mary, and that he had brothers and sisters. Now because he had a large family, that meant that he was very wealthy, for God blesses those who bless him, who do God's will with a large family, and he Blessed, God had blessed Joseph, the father of Jesus, with a large family and the wealth to support that large family. He was a very competent carpenter, very popular carpenter with uh, the people in Jerusalem. There was a lot of building always going on, and so they used his, he made a lot of wealth in Jerusalem. And so Jesus uh, followed in his father's footsteps. As a, as a carpenter, up until he reached about the age of 30. When, re, when Jesus reached the age of 30, everything changed. It's like something came over him. Like this anointing from above had come over him, how God had descended upon Jesus. And the first thing he did, he went to the River Jordan, to be baptized by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist said that this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John was saying that Jesus was the Messiah, the one who he was sent into the desert to proclaim, make way. Make the way of the Lord. Make these pathways straight. Repent. For the day of the Lord has come. And so he was pointing toward Jesus. Well, Jesus began his ministry in Nazareth. And leaving Nazareth, he went to uh, Capernaum. Where he met some fishermen. Peter, James, John. They were all fishermen, sons of Zebedee, very successful fishermen. And Jesus said to them, 
follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Well, they dropped their nets at the water's edge and followed Jesus, forsaking everything. And here I was, a rich man. And I thought for sure Jesus would benefit by my wealth. So I wasn't so much asking to follow him as I was to ask him to bless me with eternal life so that I could take my wealth into the next life. Well, as I approached that crowd, that had gathered on the road to Jericho, and he had stopped, Jesus had stopped, and he had, as was his habit, climbed to a, a high vantage point where everyone could see him and hear him, and he began to teach. Well, he was always surrounded with, by his disciples. He had 12 men, Peter, James, John, Philip, Levi, who was named Matthew. And they were like his bodyguards. They was like a buffer between uh, Jesus and the crowd. And the crowd was filled with mothers, parents, with children. And they were bringing their children to Jesus to bless them, which was a common practice among holy men, to have parents bring their children to the holy men so that the holy men could lay their hands upon the children and bless them. Well, Jesus had established himself as a man of God because no one could do the things that he was doing unless God was with him. He made the lame to walk. He cleansed the lepers. He healed the blind. He did everything that was written about him in the scriptures. And so, Jesus was standing on that hill, and the parents were trying to come to him, to have him place his hands upon their children. And the disciples were shooing them away. And Jesus became indignant. He was upset. With his disciples, he said, he rebuked them. He said, don't send the children away. Don't forbid the children to come to me. For if such is the kingdom of God. And that entire day, he spent blessing children. So I was standing amongst that crowd. And watching this spectacle of blessing children, picking them up, caressing them, kissing them, laying his hands upon them, and truly they were blessed. And so I figured it would be my turn. And so after he had blessed the last child, he had his back to me and I came up behind him and fell at his feet. And he almost tripped over me as he turned around to walk up the road to Jericho. He almost tripped over me and I said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said something to, something to me that froze me. It sent chills down my spine. For he said, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. And I said, all of these things I have done from my youth until now. What do I lack that I can e in inherit eternal life? And he said, sell all that you have. Give to the poor and then come, follow me. And you, in you will inherit eternal life. And I said, what? Are you out of your mind? I can't do that. I can't just sell everything I have and come and follow you. That's absurd. And so I turned away very sad.
And he said something that was remarkable. He said how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. For it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And the crowd said, then who can be saved? And I heard him say that with men it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. And that stuck with me for the rest of my life. Until the day of Pentecost. I was there in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And all of a sudden, from this upper room, came this noise like a mighty rushing wind. And all of a sudden, the people in that room, there were 120 of them, they came pouring out of that room. They began speaking the words of God in different languages. And men and women began to weep. And I began to weep because I understand what they said. What he, they were saying, this is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in Him, you will inherit eternal life. In Him. They said, faith in Him will grant you eternal life. And I began to watch. And I began to think. And I saw the change in these 120 people. All of a sudden, they began to give their life away. Many of them, if not all, all those who could, sold everything they had. And they, took the, they brought the proceeds and laid them at the feet of the disciples. And the disciples distributed this wealth amongst the common people. And there was no one, there was no one who was needy in that crowd. Everyone had what they needed. And so I sold my inheritance and laid it at the feet of the disciples. And I decided to follow Jesus, to be a follower of Jesus. And from that day, from that moment, when I gave up my life for Jesus, I inherited eternal life. And that's what Jesus was giving away. That's what Jesus was telling me on that road to Jerusalem. He was telling me that he is trading his life for mine. He is taking my life and trading me his and his life is eternal life. And that's why it is said, there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is by faith. Even though you haven't seen him, those who believe in his name have eternal life. Write this down, Dr. Luke so that the whole world, successive generations, will learn this and know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and in Him, and Him alone, is eternal life. He traded His life for me he laid it down at Calvary. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He traded His life for me. He left His throne in glory for a lowly manger bed. He walked among his children with no crown upon his head. His light made demons tremble, his hands the blind to see. This carpenter from Nazareth 
from backwards Galilee. He calmed the storm and healed the sick. The lame could walk again. This man whose name is Jesus, he is the Son of Man. And he traded his life for me. He laid it down at Calvary. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he traded his life for me. No Roman seal could bind him. No stone could hold him down. He ascended to the Father. And now he wears a crown. Someday he's coming back to bring his faithful servants home. To live with him forever and bow before his throne. So keep on serving Jesus. Every moment seek his face. Someday we'll gather around his throne and sing amazing grace. And he traded his life for me. He laid it down at Calvary. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he traded his life for me. Yes, he traded his life for me. He laid it down at Calvary. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he traded his life for me. And he traded his life for me. And he traded his life for me.